numerous phenomena remain elusive to human comprehension, particularly when certain occurrences defy scientific or logical explanation. This is the genesis of tales that instill fear, giving rise to myths and legends. Such narratives often find fertile ground in small villages, where rumors propagate swiftly, embellished by the human inclination for embellishment in the quest for entertainment. The story we present today is both astonishing and unconventional, delving into the profound impact of human fear on altering reality. So, settle in as we embark on this journey. The narrative unfolds in the Far East, within a secluded village situated on the fringes of the tiger-infested forest. On a crisp January morning, a local resident ventured outdoors to survey the surroundings, only to be struck with terror. Imprinted in the freshly fallen snow were colossal wolf tracks, emerging directly from the forest, meandering along the road, and inexplicably leading to and from a neighboring house. Alarmed, the man hurried home, armed himself with a gun, and summoned a friend. Together, they embarked on a mission to trace the mysterious intruder and, if need be, confront it with firepower. The two men were confounded and the tracks of two wolves extended into the yard of a local resident but did not retreat. Did this imply that the wolves were still within? Filled with trepidation, they readied their guns and knocked on the gate, prompting the inhabitant of the house to emerge and attentively listen to his neighbors. However, upon questioning, the inhabitant of the house calmly asserted that he had not sighted any wolves. Bewildered, the hunters returned home, their unease lingering. Several days passed, marked by heavy snowfall that blanketed the entire village in a fresh coat. When the same man ventured out into the morning street, his disquiet deepened as he once again discovered recent wolf tracks. These tracks, intricately winding through the village, led back to the very same house where an elderly couple resided. Once more, the elderly couple vehemently denied the presence of wolves and professed ignorance regarding the mysterious footprints. Panic gripped the village, with residents unable to fathom the origin of these unexplained footprints. The invisible wolves, seemingly haunting the village without leaving, fueled speculation. The tale evolved with each retelling, embellished by individual details. Some even claimed to have witnessed two werewolves prowling the village at night. The fear escalated to the point where people hesitated to leave their homes, children were forbidden from attending school or playing outdoors, and men organized nightly patrol units in a bid to apprehend these elusive creatures disturbing the peace. Eventually, realizing that their patrols might be scaring off the animals, the men decided to conceal themselves in different parts of the village. After several nights of this covert operation, the truth unfolded. While lying in wait, one of the men finally observed what they had been anticipating. Two colossal shadows emerged from the forest, unmistakably gigantic wolves strolling along their habitual path, winding through the yards. The wolves reached the house of the elderly couple and vanished behind their gates. The men, who had been vigilant observers, approached the fence and peered inside, only to be frozen in shock and bewilderment by what they saw. The homeowner swung the door open, ushering the two enormous wolves inside. Casting a cautious glance around, as if ensuring no prying eyes witnessed the entry, he then closed the door behind them. The hunters, outside the gate, began banging on it vigorously and shouting for the homeowner to come out immediately and provide an explanation for the peculiar scene unfolding within his house. Acknowledging that the concealment of the wolves could no longer be sustained, the elderly couple decided to reveal their story to the men. It unfolded that two years prior, during a stroll in the forest, they stumbled upon the lifeless body of a she-wolf, a victim of poachers. Next to the deceased mother lay two surviving pups. Initially presuming the pups were also lifeless, the couple discerned a faint, almost imperceptible sound. Realizing the pups were alive, they resolved to take them home. Unable to disclose their act to the villagers due to the community's strict prohibition against wolves, perceived as threats to both residents and livestock, the couple clandestinely cared for the wolf pups in their home. Subsequently, they would return the wolves to the forest. Contrary to expectations, the wolves refused to part with their benefactors and frequently visited the couple's house under the shroud of night. There, they played and frolicked until early morning before returning to the forest. 
The elderly couple guarded their secret for as long as they could, well aware of the likely adverse consequences of revealing it to the villagers. Despite initial fears, the locals were deeply moved by the tale. They unanimously agreed not to harm the tame wolves and allowed them to return to the forest in peace. The domesticated wolves neither harmed anyone nor posed a threat, even driving away other wild wolves from the village. If you enjoyed this story, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Let's continue. Marlon Cooper has been considering leaving his job and retiring in the past few years. As a member of the ranger team, he spent most of his life protecting the forest. When he returned to his hometown forest in Montana, he met a beautiful young woman named Bridget, who later became his wife. Cooper had to go through a lot. The couple had a happy marriage and a daughter named Jennifer, who became the meaning of their lives. Bridget knew something about her husband's work, because he had to spend most of his time in the local forest, thus solving the poacher's animal traps. Time flies fast, ruthlessly changing calendar pages. When Jennifer grew up, she went to the University of California to study with her friends. After college, she married and settled there, a true paradise, caressed by sunshine and warm waves. Things seemed to go well, but then bad luck knocked on Malone's door. His wife used to complain about her inner tingling and was very ill. The timid and quiet woman chose to ignore the symptoms and treat them with easy-to-use over-the-counter drugs. The problem is that Bridget often ignores her husband's advice, even though he insists on seeing a doctor as soon as possible, unfortunately, women prefer drugs. Therefore, one morning, the woman felt uncomfortable a few hours after her husband left. Unfortunately, although Mrs. Cooper immediately called the ambulance. When paramedics get there, all they can do is announce their condolences. Needless to say, this dealt a great blow to Malone, and his wife was always the closest and dearest person in the world. After his wife died, Mr. Cooper began to look as if he had aged a few years at once. His only source of happiness is to walk into that forest he is familiar with. Cooper enjoyed everything in the forest. One day, during one of his walks, he went farther than usual. It was overgrown with weeds and difficult to overcome, so he walked slowly. Suddenly, his attention was attracted by distant sounds, which sounded more like sighs. He became vigilant. Of course, he rarely used a gun, but in the forest, danger was everywhere. Shortly after the sound repeated, he realized it was coming from a nearby bush. Carefully pushing the bushes away, he saw a terrible sight. Beside the old pine tree, there is a thin bobcat, whose front paws are caught in the steel teeth of the trap. In its eyes, it is an indescribable fear of human beings that M.R. Cooper tried to calm it down. It is obvious that the lynx has spent a long time in the trap of torture and lingered. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, once he released the lynx, it did not show any resistance and it even gave him a lick. The man was puzzled and looked at the miserable animal with pity. Of course, Mr. Cooper realized that without his help, it could not survive or become prey to large predators. That's why he carefully wrapped the lynx in his sack and carried it to his car. He knew the poor lynx was in pain, so he tried to drive as carefully as possible. When they got home, Mr. Cooper examined the bobcat's injured paw and realized it needed some medicine. After treating the wound with a bactericide, the man injected it with antibodies and covered the wound with a blanket. The next day, he repeated the procedure and tried to give it some chicken soup. To his surprise, even though the lynx was very weak, it did not refuse food. He didn't even notice how he began to treat it like a regular pet. Many of his friends tried to persuade him to give up the lynx. In response, Mr. Cooper told them to choose to believe that the lynx will definitely recover. Fortunately, the experienced ranger's intuition is correct. A week later, the lynx stood up for the first time that I in memory of his cat who died many years ago, Mr. Cooper began to call Lynx Lilu. As if understanding the words of his rescuer, the lynx twitched its ears and rubbed his hand in trust. For months, Lilu has now fully recovered from her injuries and is walking gracefully around the yard in search of rats and other rodents. Meanwhile, the lynx was in no hurry to return to the forest and rarely left his house. 
The man felt in his heart that after all he had to go through, the predator would not do any harm. However, something happened soon, which turned everything upside down, the ranger's daughter, Jennifer, came to visit her father with her husband, Austin, and their son, Tony. Needless to say, he is happy about it. He bought groceries in the supermarket for a month and cleaned the house from top to bottom. Only Lilu doesn't understand what happened and stares at the owner who seems to have changed. When Cooper's family walked into the house and chatted happily, the lynx flinched and made a grumpy hiss. His daughter was worried. In response, Cooper smiled and said that he didn't know there were any more loyal and kind creatures on the earth than Lilu. Of course, at that moment, the rangers forgot that Jennifer and Austin had lived in California for many years and were no longer used to wild animals, especially those standing far away from their animals. Three days passed, and at the same time, the lynx not only did no harm to anyone, but even began to enter the little boy's room and sleep by the baby's bed. Meanwhile, Jennifer looks at the forest predator every day and refuses to let it out of her sight. One day, at dinner time, Jennifer ran into the living room, trying to hold her breath and screaming, Dad, your crazy lynx is growling at Tony. I told you it was dangerous. Shoot it. Honey. Lilu is friendlier than ordinary cats. There is no reason to worry about her. The man replied, sighing. Unfortunately, Lilu's behavior began to be repeated almost every night, and no one in the family could understand the reasons behind her behavior. Late one night, Jennifer walked into her father's room with tears in her eyes. Mr. Cooper's face changed and turned white. Then, silently, he took the old gun off the hook on the wall and went to his grandson's room. Of course, this person still can't believe that bobcats will bring any harm to his family. Once he was seen, Lilu's behavior changed immediately, and it began to rub on his legs. It doesn't seem to show any aggression towards Tony. Mr. Cooper wondered. The veteran ranger knows very well that it will never show aggression towards humans. As a result, Mr. Cooper realized that he might have forgotten to pack everything when he hurried to prepare the room for his grandson. He knelt down carefully beside the baby's bed and thoroughly examined the floor and the wall beside it. Suddenly, his hand felt a strange opening in the wall. When he shone his flashlight, his heart cooled and several pairs of small eyes stared at him from the darkness. My God, that's a snake. He cringed instinctively, then quickly ordered his daughter to take her grandson out of the room and asked her to hand him a sack. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, there are five adult snakes, each of which is dangerous to humans. Only two hours later, the seasoned ranger managed to snatch all the snakes, and the creatures turned his little grandson's room into their nest. Mr. Cooper's house is safe again. Only then did he realize that Lilu had been protecting Tony. For Mr. Cooper's relief, his relatives also understood this and thanked the clever lynx. Thank you dear. You didn't let me down. I know you won't do any harm to my family. Cooper whispered with tears in his eyes. As if knowing his master's state, the lynx licked his cheek and made a quiet meow. Since then, Jennifer and Austin are no longer afraid of Lilu. Lynx is not dangerous at all. In fact, it cares for their son very much. He hugged the lynx, stroked the back of its head, and said it was a guardian angel sent from above to protect his family. Under the calm sea surface, a man was diving in this beautiful blue ocean. The man was enjoying the beauty of the sea, while interacting with the small fish around him from time to time. But at this time the man encountered a group of blue sharks. The blue sharks not only did not attack the man, but also there was one shark swimming towards the man and intimated interaction with the man. What's going on here? What kind of unknown secrets did the man and this group of blue sharks have? When it comes to sharks, many people's first impression is, the master of the sea. In the field of film and television we can often see sharks as the main character of the works, which are accidentally set up a fierce and scary image. Indeed, sharks are predators in the sea, equivalent to the position of tigers on land. 
People who go swimming or surfing in the sea, in addition to fear of waves and other forces of nature, their most fearful thing is to meet the shark. Once the shark group ain't on lead, then it is really possible to die. But in a sea in Portugal, there was a special group of sharks, when they saw the hero of the story Stefano Uribe, they not only did not attack him, but also very friendly to him, what's going on? It turned out that a few years ago, when Stefano Uribe was in a dive, he found a fisherman was driving his fishing boat fishing at sea not far from him. He saw a special figure in the fisherman's fishing net, it was constantly turning its body in the fishing net in an attempt to break free from the net to escape. The fisherman saw this and hurriedly closed the net while cursing the bad fish that was causing trouble, fearing that it would tear his net and make him suffer losses. Stefano Uribe, W.H. O. had very good eyesight, immediately found that the violently struggling fish was a blue shark. Out of love for marine animals and protection consciousness, Stefano Uribe immediately swam to the fishing boat to persuade the fisherman so that the fisherman could release the poor blue shark to protect the ecological balance of the sea. At first the fisherman was reluctant to let the blue shark go, the fisherman said, it broke my fishing net, I caught it and sold it just to make up for my loss. Of course Stefano Uribe also thought of this, and he immediately decided to pay for this blue shark as well as this fishing net. The fisherman agreed to Stefano Uribe's request immediately after calculating that he had not suffered any loss and could even make a profit. He threw the piece of the net that hooked the blue shark directly to Stefano Uribe, along with the blue shark. Stefano Uribe hurriedly and carefully untangled the net around the blue shark, so that the blue shark regained its F. Freedom. The blue shark seemed to understand that the man in front of it saved it, so the blue shark thankfully swam around Stefano Uribe a few times and then left. Stefano Uribe was also happy that he was able to free the blue shark, although it cost a lot of money, in his heart it was something very worthwhile. But something more incredible happened, it was said that the memory of the fish only lasted 7 seconds, but this blue shark really broke the rumor. Because one day, a few years later, when Stefano Uribe returned to the sea diving again, the blue shark reappeared in front of his eyes, and it was accompanied by its partners. Not only did they not actively attack Stefano Uribe, but they even swam around him curiously, familiarizing themselves with his scent. At first Stefano Uribe was also very confused, until the blue shark group swam out of a blue shark with a special scar, Stefano Uribe recognized this blue shark was the blue shark he saved entangled in the fishing net. The blue shark saw Stefano Uribe and seemed a little disbelieving to swim up to him. After smelling the familiar smell, the blue shark was very happy and swam quickly t. Oh Stefano Uribe sighed, sticking out its little tongue and leaving a kiss on Stefano Uribe's face. This warm picture was really touching. Who would have thought that the fierce shark would be so friendly to humans? Even a powerful creature like a shark can encounter difficulties that it cannot solve, especially since they do not have flexible hands like humans. The shark in the story below found itself in a difficult situation and then asked human to help it in time to get out of the trouble. Sharks are recognized as some of the fiercest predators in the ocean, yet there are repeated news of sharks being rescued by humans. Perhaps, sharks are much more vulnerable than we think. In the waters off Sarawak, Malaysia, a whale shark with its fins tangled in a rope approached a boat that was fishing of its own accord, it kept hovering and poking out of the water around the boat, seemingly seeking help. The fisherman on the boat spotted the whale shark and at first everyone panicked, wondering why the whale shark had been swimming around their small fishing boat and they were worried that the whale shark was aimed at the people on board and wanted to take everyone as its food. But after a while, one of the fishermen finally found the whale shark strange thing, it had not attacked the fishing boat, but just swam around the fishing boat in circles, 
until the fishermen saw the rope tightly tied to the whale shark, they knew its difficulties. They knew that the whale shark was suffering from the lack of human hands, and could not untie the rope by itself, so it thought of venturing to human territory to seek humans' help. After understanding the whale shark's intentio, and, in order to help it, the fisherman picked up a rod with a hook and carefully hooked the rope, wanting to pull the whale shark closer to the fishing boat, to facilitate them to untie the rope. The people thought that such a move would anger the whale shark, so their movements were very light. However, the whale shark unexpectedly did not resist, allowing itself to be pulled to the side of the boat. The whale shark also seemed to understand the intention of humans, and did not resist. The fish men eventually used a kitchen knife to cut the rope and returned the whale shark to freedom. This big guy did not rush to leave after getting rid of the restraints, but stayed next to the small fishing boat for a while. When hearing the fishermen say goodbye to themselves, they also very humanely turned sideways and raised their short fins to wave goodbye, not forgetting to paddle to thank these kind humans. Finally the whale shark swam away with its partner the remora fish, and the fishermen stood on the boat and waved goodbye to them. Of course the fishermen also salvaged the rope aft. Or untying it to prevent the rope from remaining in the ocean and continuing to harm other marine life. Although the shark looks very tough, people are afraid when talking about sharks. But in fact they are also very vulnerable. At present, due to humans fishing operations about sharks, resulting in a sharp decline in the number of sharks, most of which are already on the verge of extinction. Humans have done far more harm to it, and with excessive human activity, more and more of the water has suffered from pollution. White pollution, oil spills and so on, which are threatening the lives of Vari, us animals on Earth. So we must start from ourselves and do every little thing to protect the environment, so that we can protect the wild animals better and usher in a more hopeful and better harmonious world.